This is the full section in the Argan diagrams uh, chapter, and now we're going to be looking at loci. Now we've been solving um, some equations, uh, complex equations, or uh, equations that have complex solutions, um, and they've had a single solution or sets like uh, two solutions, conjugate pairs. There are some uh, equations which have a whole set of solutions and basically uh, when we've got these loci in the Argon diagram what we're doing is basically drawing the whole set of solutions so we're drawing them on on a diagram so there's not just a single solution there's a whole set of solutions to these equations now the first one is where you have um let's say for example something like this uh, z minus uh, 2 plus 3i modulus of that equals 4. so what this means is um i want to be able to put a complex number here subtract this do the modulus of that and always get 4. Now, there's lots of solutions to this, and the solutions to this, all the complex numbers that satisfy this, will form a circle. So that red line represents the solutions to this particular equation here. And what we find is, is it's going to be a circle. Uh, this is the radius of the circle. And this here is the center of the circle as drawn on our grand diagram. Notice here that this is a minus, yeah, so that's always a minus. Yeah, really important. So, in general, what does that mean? Okay, so if I've got, um, I need to draw the loci, the whole sets of solutions for. Uh, z minus z1 so z1 will be something that's given um, equals r a particular value then r well we use r because it's always going to be this radius of uh, the circle z1 that will be given um, that will give the coordinates of the center of the circle yeah and it's useful to remind yourself at this point the equation from GCSE uh, the equation of a circle which was x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared where the center of the circle is a b so this maybe we can see the link between the two and the radius is r now, whenever we have equations which use x and y, they're called Cartesian equations. Okay, so we'll say this is the Cartesian, basically means x and y. We'll put in brackets x, y, Cartesian equation of a circle. Okay, so that's the first loci, the first set of solutions is that, yeah, a circle. And a circle represents the whole set of solutions of these types of equations. The second type is where you might have something like this. Let's say I had uh, z minus uh, 3 plus i. And I've got the modulus of that modulus of that equals uh, z minus two uh, i minus uh, let's change that around so two minus four i like that. Now the whole this whole set of solutions would be a 
perpendicular bisector between these two points okay so if I plotted those two points plotted these two points and then if I join them up then joined them up the solutions so whole range of solutions is the perpendicular bisector of the line joining the two points so in general um, if I've got these two points which I'll call Z1 and Z2 then Z1 minus Z2 the modulus of that equal to basically the size of the modulus of Z minus Z2 then these values of Z the first letter in a bracket form this perpendicular bisector and notice this is always minus just like last one yeah so always minus sign and the loci um, in other words basically the, the values of z form this line here yeah that's the solutions okay let's have a look at this one z satisfies um, that sketch the loci of z in the argram diagram right so it's of this format z minus uh, and you could write this as 0 plus 4 uh, actually not 0 plus 4i 4 plus 0i 4 plus 0i so you could write it like that equals 5 okay so this is a circle where the center of the circle is at the point uh, 4 0 and the radius of the circle is 5 so let's just sketch that on a argon diagram you don't need a compass doesn't need to be perfect but try and be fairly accurate so um, right so 4 0 is the center so 4 there if it's got a radius of 5 what that means is it's going to go over to 9 on this side and it's going to go to negative 1 on this side so that's where the edges of the circle will be so let's try our best look at that it's probably the best circle you've ever drawn and um, the top of the circle so here since the radius is 5 that will be five there and down here that would be negative five so that's not where the circle crosses the axis it's basically where the, the tops and the bottoms are the axis of the circle part b find the values of z that satisfy both those things right okay might be worth mentioning at this point that if you have a question that says um the imaginary part of z is zero okay now if the imaginary part of a complex number is zero that means it's along this line here yeah this is where these are all numbers which have an imaginary part of zero so you could say that the if it says imaginary zero that's the real axis which you, you could think of as the x-axis let's call it the x-axis don't tell anyone else though and if it says the real part of this number is zero well this is going to be the all these points here if the real part is zero it's just an imaginary number that's on x, this axis here so um, that is the imaginary axis and let's just call that between ourselves let's just call that the y-axis yeah so in the first part of part b 
we need to solve basically where the circle and the circle here and the x axis intersect. Where does the circle intersect with the circle and the x axis? So that's going to be here and here. So the values of z, if they were coordinates, they'd be 9, 0, and negative 1, 0. But since we're writing our answers as z complex numbers, that's going to be uh, z equals uh, 9 plus 0i and z equals negative 1 plus 0i. Yeah, so just writing it as complex numbers for fullness. Then part 2 is basically where does the circle intersect where the real values are 0? So where does the circle intersect with the y-axis yeah, here? So that's going to be these two points here and here. So let's just mark that on. So we want to find out basically what this point and this point are. Probably not the best colour, purple on purple. Let's do a different colour. So this one and this one. So I'll just write that down and then we'll think about how, how we do that. So where the circle intersects with the y-axis. Now, the easy way to do that is the y-axis is where the x values equal 0 and the x-axis is where the y values equal 0. So to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to write the equation of the circle in Cartesian form because we need to solve equations. So the equation of the circle that has a centre of 4, 0 and a radius of 5 in Cartesian form would be x minus 4 all squared plus y plus 0 minus 0 all squared equals 5 squared. So we'll tidy that up. So we'll get x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals 25. And if it's where it intersects the y-axis, we just make x equal to 0 and we substitute that in. So if we made x equal to 0, let's write x equals 0 like that, then we would have 0 minus 4 all squared plus y squared equals 25. So we'll have 16 plus y squared equals 25. So we'll have y squared equals 25 minus 16, which is 9, which means that y is plus or minus 3. So that's the y value. There we go. So um, if we're going to write that as a complex number, we'd say that z equals 0 plus 3i, z equals 0 minus 3i. So that's where the circle and the line intersect. Okay. So a complex number is represented by the point P in the R again diagram given by that sketch the loci. First thing, get it in the correct format. So that means we must have z minus something in brackets. So that's going to be 5 plus 3i. So it must be written in that way. Equals 3. So I can see the centre of the circle has coordinate 5, 3. And it has a radius of 3. So let's plot that. Maybe better to do it over here. So 5, 3, 5 across, 3 up. That's the centre. And a radius of 3, which means, um, let's see, the top of the circle then is going to be at 6. And the bottom is going to be at 0. And then it will go to 2 this side. And it will go across to 8 over here. 
So bear in mind this is just the sketch. So basically you've got the top, the bottom, the left and the right. So let's try our best. So something like this. Okay. Um, part B, find the Cartesian equation. That's easy now. So um, x minus 5 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared equals 9, 3 squared. That's part B done. That's easy. Part C, find the maximum and minimum values of the argument in this interval. Right. How do we do that? Well, the minimum argument is what's the smallest angle to get to the circle? That's going to be here. And the maximum argument is going to be, let's try and improve this line, how far round to get to the other side of the circle. And that's going to be here, like this. Okay, so this is the minimum argument. This is the maximum argument. Now, the medium, minimum one is easy. That's just zero, isn't it? Let's just write that down. Min log z equals zero. Now, to find the maximum argument, we're going to use uh, some work from GCSE, actually, to help us with this. Um, do you remember a tangent meets the radius at a right angle? So, yeah, tangent and radius meet at a right angle. If that's the case, then actually I could use trigonometry to work out this angle here and then double it. Yeah, because I know the dimensions of that triangle. So let me just draw this out here so you can see what's going on. So this is a circle theorem. Radius and a tangent meet at right angle. So here's the tangent here. Here's the radius, because it's just going straight down. And the circle is basically sort of going around like this. Yeah. And um, I want to know this angle here. Uh, it goes three up and five across. So if we call this angle here, uh, let's just call that theta and whatever it is any letter we like so that angle is equal to the tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent and the maximum argument basically is two of those so this one as well yeah they're the same there's another circle theorem about tangents meet at the same distance outside the circle so we know those two triangles are uh, congruent so um, if we just double that tan inverse of three fifths we get the argument so let's write down max argument of z is going to equal two times tan inverse of three fifths remember in radians and quite often you find with these loci questions that we're dealing with um, stuff that's like circle theorems. Now if I do that, I get 1.3. No, I don't get 1.3 something. I did tan 3 fifths rather than tan inverse. So that is 1.08. It's like 0.839001 radians. So that's the maximum argument. So there we were using circle theorems to help us out on that. Well, this one says, given that the complex number z equals x plus i to the y satisfies this equation, find the minimum and uh, maximum value of uh, the modulus of z. So the first thing we're going to do, before we talk about what this means, the minimum uh, argument, uh, sorry, not argument, the minimum modulus and the maximum modulus, we're going to sketch it. So here's my argand diagram with my uh, real and imaginary axis here. 
and I know that this is going to be a circle and the radius of the circle is three. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this in the correct form so I can easily see the center. So remember, it's always Z minus and then in brackets, that's going to be the center. So that will be 12 plus 5i. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of thinking, oh, it's negative 12, negative 5. It must be written as Z minus and then in brackets is the center. So there's our center here and here's our radius. So what we want is to draw a circle that has a center at 12, 5. So it's 12 across, 5 up. So remember, this is only a sketch. And it has a radius of 3. So this end here goes up to 15. This side of the circle will be um, 9. The bottom of the circle here will be at 2. And the top of the circle here will be at 8. Yep, so all I'm doing now is join the dots like this. Perfect circle there. So there's the actual loci drawn. Now to find the minimum and the maximum modulus, that is the uh, longest and the shortest distance of that loci from the origin. Okay, so the maximum and minimum low uh, not low kind uh, modulus okay so that's basically this isn't it is the maximum and minimum distances of the loci from the origin. So that's what we want to find. What's the maximum and minimum distance from the origin? Okay, now that will be a line that goes through the center of the circle, like this. Okay, so uh, whenever we were asked to find these minimum and maximum distances, if it's a circle like this, then that minimum ma maximum distance line will go through the uh, center of the circle. So the minimum, minimum, maximum modulus line goes through the center of the circle. The circle. Now it's actually finding finding it is not as hard um, as it actually looks in this question. So what I'm going to do first of all is to find the the length of this line from here to the center of the circle. Okay, so let me put a dotted line in like this. Let's highlight it. So I'm basically trying to find the length of this. Now you may notice here we've got a right angle triangle and it's a right angle triangle where the length of the bottom here is 12 uh, this height here is 5 so if I want to find this distance here using Pythagoras it's going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared which is 13. Okay, so the distance uh, from origin to central circle equals 13. Okay, so this length here is 13. Now, since um, we have bits of the radius so I have uh, a length here and I know that length is 3 and I have a length here and I know that length is 3 then all I need to do to find a minimum and ma maximum distances or modulus I just add 3 to 13 and take away 3 from 13 okay so let's start with the uh, minimum modulus 
that's the minimum the closest distance of that circle from the origin so the minimum modulus of z is equal to 13 minus 3 which is 10 and the maximum modulus will be 13 because that's the center of the circle plus 3 which is 16. Right, you should now be able to do uh, questions 1 to 5 on exercise 2e uh, on pages 34 to 36. Once you've done that, you'll then move on to the next loci. Right, so this is a different type of uh, loci now, which we did right at the start, which is the perpendicular bisector one. Okay, so now we'll do some questions on the perpendicular bisector. So we're given that um, information in that equation. So let's draw an axis like this. Now the format for this needs to be z minus z1 equals z minus z2. So um, I'm going to write out in full as this z minus 3 plus 0i equals z minus 0 minus i. So if I write it like this, I can see really clearly in brackets here where these two points are. Yes, it always got to be in that format. So I've got one point on 3, 0. So one, two, three. I know it's not accurate. So three zero. This is where one of the points is, and the other one is zero negative one. So negative one is there. Right. I'm going to draw in the two points up like this, and then I'm going to draw the perpendicular bisector. So this green line here. That is the locus of that equation. Now we want the Cartesian equation of this green line. That means in the form um, using x and y. Um, so what I'm going to introduce to you is a really useful formula to find the equation of a straight line, which is this. You'll do this in your normal math lessons. Okay, so we can use this to find the equation of a straight line of a straight line with gradient m, so it's got a gradient of m, and passing through, so it's going through the point uh, x1 comma y1 yeah so if we know a point that the line passes through and we know its gradient we can just substitute them into that equation to work out what the equation of the line is now this line that we're trying to find the equation of it passes through the midpoint between this three zero and negative one zero so it's the midpoint of um, 3, 0, and 0, negative 1. Now, I should have done this at GCSC to find the midpoint of um, uh, two points. You add the x coordinates together and divide by 2. You add the y coordinates together and you divide by 2. So let's do that. So the x coordinates are 3 and 0. The y coordinates are 0 and negative 1. So if we do that, we get a midpoint of 3 over 2. We'll keep it as a fraction and negative a half. OK, so this is my x1, y1 that I'm going to put into the equation. The other thing I need to know is the gradient 
Now the green line is perpendicular to the line joining, the dotted line joining the negative one and three. So I'm going to find the gradient of that line. Okay, so the gradient of this is pretty easy. It's the change in y and it goes up by one. Um, and it uh, goes across by three. So it's got a gradient of three. That means the gradient of my green line minus one over n would be uh, negative three. Okay, so negative one over a third gives me negative three. Right, so now I have the gradient of the green line and a point that it passes through. Now I can use this y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So y minus y1, that is negative a half. Y minus Y1 equals M, the gradient, negative 3, times by X minus X1, the X coordinate passes through 3 over 2. Okay, now I can leave it like that, but let's tidy it up. It becomes Y plus a half equals, and I can expand the brackets, minus 3X, then plus uh, negative 3 over 2, or 3 over 2 times by 3, is mine over two and then if I write it in the form y equals that's going to be minus 3x and I've got nine over two take away a half is eight over two which is four so this is in the form y equals mx plus c the equation of that green line the loci Right, part B, the least possible value of Z. Now, if you have a line, which we've got here, and you want to find the shortest distance from the origin or from a point to a line, that line is a perpendicular. So the shortest distance is the perpendicular distance from... Uh, that point which is the origin to the line so we'll just write that down so the shortest distance between um, the origin and the line and line I'll just put and line is a perpendicular to the line uh, from the origin. So that the least possible value of Z, the minimum possible value of Z, is basically the length of this line in purple here, where this is a right angle. We want to know how long that line is. Well, we know that one end of the line is at zero, zero. We need to work out what this point is here. Now, that point is where that little short purple line and the green line intersect. We know the equation of the green line. We want to find the equation of that little purple line. So I'll call that the distance line. That's the little one in purple. Now the distance line is perpendicular to the green line, so it has a gradient of a third. The same gradient as the blue dotted line joining the two points. So distance line, its gradient is a third. And we know it goes through the point zero, zero. So Using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, I get the equation of that line as uh, y minus 0 equals a third x minus 0. So that's basically y equals a third x. So that's the equation of the distance line. What do I do now? 
Well, I'm now going to solve simultaneously the distance line, which I've got here, and the green line, which I've got here. So I'm going to solve simultaneously to work out that point where the two intersect. So if I solve them simultaneously, let's replace y with a third x in the first equation. So y, so you got a, a third x equals negative 3x plus 4. So if I add 3x to both sides, I get 3 and a third x equals 4. So if I divide both sides by um, 3 and a 4, 3 and a third, so 4 divided by uh, 3 and a third, which is 10 over 3, I get an x coordinate of 6 over 5. So let's put 6 over 5. So this is the x coordinate where these two lines cross. I now want to work out the y coordinate where these two lines cross. So let me substitute this here for 6 over 5. So let's do that. Um, so that will be y equals a third times by 6 over 5. So we get a y coordinate of 6 over 15, 6 over 15, which we can simplify to divide by 3, 2 over 5. So that, let's go back to the diagram over here, that question mark, that point where they cross is the coordinate 6 over 5, 2 over 5, like that. And what I want to do is to find out the distance between 0, 0 and 6 over 5, 2 over 5. So that's just Pythagoras. So the actual distance or the least possible value of z is going to be the square root of 6 over 5 all squared plus 2 over 5 all squared. So that's going to be something like 36 over 25 over 25 plus 4 over 25. So 4 over 25. I'm just squaring them in my head. 8 over 5. And if we square root that, square our answer, um, we get 2 root 10 over 5. So I'll just check that again. So 36 over 25 plus 4 over 25 gives 8 over 5. Square of my answer and I get yet 2 root 10 over 5. That's the exact distance. So 2 root 10 over 5 is that distance, the shortest distance between the line and the origin yeah so there was a lot to do there so i'll just run for it very quickly so we um worked out the equation of this green line so we worked out the gradient of this which was a third so the gradient of this is minus three we know it goes through the midpoint between these two and the midpoint of these two was three over two a half so we've got a point that it passes through three over two a half or negative a half we had its gradient which was three we plugged it into this and we got the equation of that green line as y equals minus 3x plus 4 we need to find the least possible value of z in other words the shortest distance from the origin to that line and that's a line which is perpendicular to this line to the origin so shortest distance is always these perpendicular distances so we need to find the equation of this line uh, so it goes through the point zero zero and has a gradient a third because it's perpendicular to the green line in other words it's parallel to this dotted line so that had a gradient of a third passed through the point zero zero so it's got an equation y equals a third x 
we solved the equation for this green line and purple line simultaneously. So this line and this line we solved simultaneously and we got an x value of 6 over 5 and a y value of 2 over 5. 6 over 5, 2 over 5. We then used Pythagoras to find that distance and we got a, a distance of 2 root 10 over 5. Right, you should now be able to do uh, questions 6 to 9 of that same exercise, um, exercise 2e, questions 6 to 9. Right, last loci, and it's something called a half line. Okay, so um, a half line, because it's only half a line, a half line um, starts at Z1, so it's going to be some coordinate, at an angle of theta um, above, above um, a line um, going through the start of the line the line and horizontal to it so again this represents a set of solutions right so let's try and translate what i've just said so this point here okay this is z1 Yeah, so it might be, for example, one, one, two, five, something like that. Some coordinate where it starts. And when we do that, we should always draw an open circle because that point actually isn't part of the solutions. So there should be a little circle there. The angle, well, where this point is, can you see there's like a horizontal line going through the point? That's the second part of my explanation. And then we'll have an argument and that will be either going around that way if the argument is positive or going around this way when the argument is negative so we basically just need to plot a point z1 and draw an argument so for example if i had um, the argument of z minus 4 plus 2i equals pi over 3 that basically means that I have a line starting at the point 4, 2, 4, 2, and I'm going to draw a dotted line, oh, sorry, a circle, then a dotted line here to show where I'm measuring my um, argument from, and I want an argument of pi over 3, and then I'll draw my line like this. Yeah, so it's this angle here, which is an argument of pi over 3 and we can find the equation of this line um, because we can use tan inverse to work out the gradient of the line and we know a point that it passes through that would be like uh, uh, 2, 4 or 4, 2 so yeah if I was to work out the equation of this line so again using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 um, this goes for the points 2, 4, so I can replace um, that with, sorry, 2, 4, 4, 2, so I can replace that with 4, I can replace this with 2, because that's the point that it passes through, that's this point here, and the gradient, well, that's not too difficult, the gradient, I can work out, if I can find the lengths of those sides. Now, if this angle is pi over 3, and I want to find the opposite and the adjacent, well, if I do the tan inverse, not the tan inverse, if I do the tan of pi over 3, it will tell me the ratio of those sides. So if I do the tan in radians, if I do the tan of pi over 3, I get root 3. Right, so what does that mean? The ratio of the sides is root 3 over 1. That's root 3. So this side would be root 3. This would be 1. In fact, this value you get here 
because it's the opposite over the adjacent in, in the change in y over the change in x, this is the gradient here, this is m. Yeah, so if you do the tan inverse of the angle, you'll get the gradient. So then I can put root 3 here. There we go. Yeah, and multiply that out if I wish. Then I've got the equation of that line. Okay. Uh, first thing, write it in the correct format. So argument, argument z minus, just like all the others, z minus has got to be written the correct way. Um, and that would be negative 3 minus 2i equals 3 pi over 4. So we'll draw an axis like this. And um, this half line is starting at the point negative 3, negative 2. So I'll draw an open circle here because that's actually not part of the solution. Then I'll draw a dotted line to show where I'm measuring the argument from. And it's 3 pi over 4. So that's like 3 lots of 45, 135 degrees. So my line should be going off like this in that direction. And this angle here is 3 pi over so that red line represents the locus of Z, the whole solutions for that equation. Part B, basically find the Cartesian equation of locus, find the equation of that line. Okay, so we need to find a point that it passes through. So it passes through the point negative 3, negative 2. That's going to be my x1, y1 in my equation for the equation of a straight line then i want to know its gradient now this is a diagonal line and you can work out the gradient without too much problems like this it's a line which is parallel to this yeah going down it's like a 45 degree angle here or pi over 4 angle Lines like this have a gradient of negative 1. And then if we had a line like this, uh, and this was a 45 degree angle, lines like this have a gradient of 1. So without having to do any trigonometry, we can work out that the gradient m is negative 1. So y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, tidy that up, y plus 2 equals uh, negative x, and we'll have x plus 3, I'm missing the bracket here, let's put another one there like that, so um, it could be negative x minus 3, so you've got y equals negative x, uh, minus 5. So that is the equation of that half line. Y equals uh, negative x minus 5. Part C for other complex numbers that satisfies that. And this circle. Right. First thing we want to do. Let's um, work out what the equation of the circle is. So we've got z minus minus 3 minus 2i equals 10. So it's a circle where the center is here, the same point with a radius of 10. So it's quite big. So something like this. And we want to find out what this point is here. Where do the line and the circle intersect? Now we may get two solutions, but we ignore this one because there's no line there. It's only a half line. Yeah, if we get that solution, we ignore it. So let's find a Cartesian equation of this circle. 
um, so it's got a center at minus 3 minus 2 and it's got a radius of 10 so Cartesian equation y x minus minus 3 so x plus 3 plus y minus minus 2 so y plus 2 squared equals 100 if we're trying to find where it um, intersects with the line so we're going to solve simultaneously so that means we will replace y with minus x minus 5 so we will have x plus 3 all squared plus y now becomes negative x minus 5 plus 2 all squared equals 100 so let's start expanding and solving um, so we'll get um, x squared plus 6x plus 9 then the second bracket becomes negative x um, minus 3 so if we expand negative x plus 3 uh, let's write it up here I don't want to negative x uh, minus 3 don't want to make any mistakes negative x minus 3 so if we square that we'll get x squared then we will get 3x and 3x so we'll get plus 6x and then we'll get 9 that equals 100 so that will give us 2x squared um, plus 12x plus 18 equals 100 let's take 100 away from both sides so we've got 2x squared um, plus 12x then that will give us negative 82 equals zero now we can use the quadratic equation I'm just going to use the calculator now if you want to use the calculator to do this which I'm going to do you do menu and then you go down to A you can actually press A so you want A we're solving a polynomial so we'll do 2 and uh, the degree is 2 because it only goes up to squared and now I just type in the coefficients so 2 in front of x squared 12 in front of x negative 82 in front of or just a number press equals and I will get two answers here first one is minus 3 plus 5 root 2 is 1 press equals again I get negative 3 minus 5 root 2 now that's if it was a full line that second solution this solution here that is actually a negative number that would be here but that point doesn't exist because it's only a half line so I take the top value here so uh, this is the x value or the real part where it intersects the circle the line in the circle now I'm going to work out the y value okay by substituting into this here so the y value is that negative value minus 5 so if I take that number I've got there put a negative sign in front of it then take away 5 what I'm left with is negative 2 negative 2 let's get it in the right color negative 2 um, plus 5 root 2 
five root two. So basically all we're doing is we're making uh, this a positive here and then taking the five away, which will give us this, make that positive, that'll be three, um, three plus five root two. And then if you take away five, you end up with that negative uh, two plus five root two. So now we're ready for our final answer. This is the point where that circle and the half line cross the x value the real value is negative 3 plus 5 root 2 that's the real part plus the imaginary part is negative 2 plus 5 root 2 i so there is our final answer after all of that hard work Right, you should now be able to finish the exercise 2E, which is questions 10 to 15.